have that. This is too much. It looks like you're passing gas a little bit. This is a deal breaker. Do you like the Jonas Brothers? Party people, this show is a vibe. If you don't know what I'm talking about, thank you for clicking on our random video. If you want to do those YouTube things, that would be dope. But we're talking about Love is Blind season three. It's a popular dating show that YouTube commentators love to talk about, so you can put me on that list now. The show follows 15 men and 15 women, all hoping to find their one true love. The men and women date each other in these pods where they can talk to each other but cannot see each other. Based on personalities and not physical looks, people get proposed to and their love gets tested in the real world. I also find it very funny that all these people dress up for speed dating where they can't see each other. Anyways, let's talk about the cast. First off, we have the most talked about guy this season, Andrew. He did not disappoint. Andrew's the type of guy that went abroad and won't stop talking about how it made him so cultured. Uh, I went to South Africa. I volunteered at wildlife conservation. That's, that's where I discovered wildlife photography. 20 days spent in the bush, getting up into the sunrises, dealing with the mosquitoes, hiding from the sun under a Maasai blanket, enduring the scent of decaying carcasses. Yeah, I'm so glad you got to take all those photos of decaying animals. That that sounds awesome. He's also that guy that's trying really hard to prove that he's not a virgin anymore. You're synced up like that, every, every caress on the nipples, on your arm a tongue and your tummy, like both people enjoying every every second of it. I don't swoon over this, I, or unless this is how women want men to talk to them like. The ultimate goal of that is to uh, have an orgasm without ejaculating. <laughs> At this point, I'm able to have uh, sort of mini orgasms uh, without ejaculating during sex, which is the greatest. Is this guy mansplaining edging to her. I will admit Andrew is pretty entertaining on just how douchey he is, but he does propose to this woman Nancy and gets rejected. It just doesn't feel right. So he's really not part of the show that long, but he does leave us with one last gift. It didn't feel good, to be completely honest. I guess it's a good moment for that. I never thought I could care for someone that would bring me to tears. You never thought you would meet someone that would bring you to tears? Do you do this at funerals, man? If you wanted some authentic tears, you should have just looked at your Bitcoin investments. Then we have Bartise. Bartise reminds me of a Christian camp counselor that thinks everything is going great and everything is super rad. Oh, got a yoga ball in here. Okay, it was my idea to put them in here. No way. Yeah, it was. It Why was. are you so damn cute? Oh my, oh god. my god, thank you. Oh my god, I love yoga balls. Yoga balls are the best thing ever in this world. Like, if you don't like yoga balls, I'm sorry. I don't want to be around you. Bartise is worried that most of the women will judge him for his age because he's younger than most of the men. I have 100% been judged by my age. And I'm going to tell you right now, he acts his age. And based off how he talks to Nancy about having kids, I think you'll agree. Fucking talk about getting pumped full of kids from a fucking kid. Dude. Ugh. I'm glad you're not swooning after that talk, Nancy. Bartise and Nancy end up getting engaged, and I, I just can't wait for Nancy to explain to Bartise what edging is. But Nancy's just really excited thinking about all those things her future husband gets to do. When we're old, yeah, you're gonna be wiping my ass. And I already told him that, and he said he wouldn't, but I'll, I'll make him do it anyways. That was a really specific thing to say right after you get engaged. Like, was that something that kept you up at night? Then we have Raven, who's a self-described serial worker outer. I'm like a serial worker outer. Yeah, she's so committed to fitness when Bartise is explaining how his parents' relationship fell apart. She's only got one thing on the mind, and that's her gains. Essentially, the whole group of us has put it together that this is the man that my mom was engaged to. My dad, when he found out, threw a fucking fit. And so that was the beginning of the end for my parents' relationship. And this is crazy that I felt comfortable enough saying that. Like, I would never have thought in a million years I'm going to share that fucking story. I can't believe I just did. Oh, but, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, imagine what it's like to be your therapist. All right, so did you discuss the cycle of family trauma with your mother this weekend? All right, Raven, we're supposed to be working out our feelings right now and not our bods. But the worst part is that Bartise hears her working out the whole time. While well, you do your jumping jacks. You can hear it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Why I heard it? it during that story, that monologue I was telling. I was like, oh, my. Yeah, that's 
pretty bad, but at least she's learned her lesson now and she'll listen to people when they're talking to her. Ortiz gets as deep as he's ever gotten in his life and the person that's listening to him is doing a fucking workout. No, <laughs> that's funny. Damn, that's so Raven. But the only thing that can stop this serial worker outer is her future fiance, SK, talking about his parents' polygamy relationship. I come from a polygamous family. My dad has more than one wife. Raven's like, Bartise, I've heard about parents getting divorced, but a husband with two wives? Now you have my attention. But when SK proposes, she almost literally walks out the door. Will you marry me? Yes, sir. Then we have Colleen who wants you to know that she is a ballet dancer. I'm a ballet dancer. I'm a ballet dancer. Ballet dancer. Ballet dancer. You know, talking to a ballet dancer, not every day you get to talk to one. That's so true. I like, I've always wanted to ask a ballet dancer like, things. The only problem with her is that she doesn't want to have a deep connection with her husband. She wants to keep things more surface level. I'm just not used to getting deep. I, I don't want to say I'm like shallow by any means, but I'm comfortable with keeping things surface level and fun. I know for sure I don't want a shallow marriage relationship. I don't know, I've never been attracted to that. This is such a problem for her when she mentions her surface level relationships. This is how her parents react. Because you guys know me, like I don't get deep. Mm. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> <laughs> yeah, opening up a bottle of wine, no problem. But to people, ugh. she ends up getting engaged to Matt, who desperately needs to talk about his problems. Straight out of high school, we ran to the Justice of the Peace and signed the paperwork to become legally married. I found out she cheated on me. So she called me and she told me she was pregnant. <sighs> pregnant by the other guy. And that was the, uh, that was the last time I ever heard from her. Okay. Yikes. He's a guy that when this was being filmed really needed therapy. So I think this relationship might need a bigger investment than just being surface level. Then we have Cole. Cole is like Zach Alphanakis from The Hangover. Like he means well, but he just says and does things where you're just like, what are you doing, dude? Oh no, you're a nurse. Yeah. What do you mean? No. <laughs> no, I just, <laughs> no. A nurses are off the table for me. <laughs> I don't do nurses. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. He just like doesn't really know how to read the room at some times or even pick up his own room. There's nowhere good to angle you. Let's try like TV or Oh, it's very you. It's, it's dirty. Yeah, when I expected. Cole, you knew when you left for the show, there was a possibility of you bringing back your future wife to this apartment. And like, you couldn't even flush the toilet. He gets engaged to Zay, who is bossy. Let me help you out the Mm. Don't we don't need any more on this side. And if if you want to like maybe pick up your towel sometime, and maybe not like throw it across the coffee table. Is this dirty? Mm -hmm. Do you know where you can put it? Like a laundry basket. Really? Yeah, these two's dynamic is more of an out of control child and the mother who's just over it. Then finally, we have Alexa and Brennan who have the most stable relationship throughout the whole show and honestly are a little boring. The most notable thing that happens to them is that Brennan is willing to convert to Judaism and Alexa's dad tries to help Brennan out by finding a knife for the circumcision. We need to make sure I got this. Oh yeah, they hit the knives out. So I got this so you can bite on something. Oh, thanks, I appreciate that. Which knife do you want? <laughs> you know, I respect the creative thinking from Alexa's father. Usually dads are like, hey, if you hurt my daughter, you meet my shotgun. But this guy's like, hey, you're marrying my daughter and that makes me really happy. So happy that I wanna cut your dick off. So you don't wanna meet me when I'm pissed. So all these couples get to go to a resort and test their love in the real world. But whoever's filming Raven and SK scenes really got artsy with the shots. Oh, sir, he might like think my face is weird, not like my hair. And focusing on Raven's feet. Mm -hmm. I think like, like I'm probably more like physically awkward person. No, but I want us to be able to. Most of the couples have little problems here and there popping up, just like Zay and Cole, who just can't find an interesting topic to talk about. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a boring conversation. <laughs> Let's talk about something awesome. What do you What's your favorite big cat? Damn, Cole, you must have some pretty boring conversations if you think what is your favorite big cat is the start of an interesting conversation. After seeing all the girls, are you having any second thoughts?
Dude, just say no. That's the layup answer right there. Like, are you taking lessons from Andrew on how to talk to women? Wow, it's the hesitation for me. No, I'm not having any second thoughts. No? Not even a little bit. Yeah, I just had a few thoughts in between when you asked the question and when I answered the question. Not even a little bit. Cole does constantly put his foot in his mouth and it does lead to him being extremely rude to Zay. And then they asked you to rate me. I was like, you're a nine out of 10. And then you were like, is there anyone here you, who you think is a 10 out of 10? I was just like- Yeah, Colleen. I, I was like, maybe one person, which- No, you said two people. Do you realize I give like an 80% of the women in the world like less than a seven, I give you a nine out of 10. Dude, how are you fucking this up? This is dating 101. You're a nine out of 10. Zay is really insecure about her appearance and these types of comments from Cole don't help. Again, I don't think there's any malintent on Cole's side, but like, you really gotta think before you talk, man. You're a nine out of 10. Bartis and Nancy start bonding over hypotheticals where you can tell that Bartis is loving these questions. What if you were at your friend's house and Dookie in the toilet? <laughs> and then what do, you, what do you use to unclog the toilet? Like one time I didn't have a plunger, scrubber of the toilet. And I was like, let me just like jab it into the- Jesus, what? So yeah, I'm loving these hypothetical questions here, Nancy. Yeah, just just keep asking me about the shitty ones. Yeah, just keep, keep asking. No, I'm not doing that tonight. You are young enough to do that on your own. Also, side note, I think it's really funny that Cole and Zay got their own personalized hot tub pool over here, and Bartiz and Nancy are trying to have this romantic night in this tiny bathtub. But now let's talk about the couple that's struggling the most, Matt and Colleen. Uh, geez. Buckle up, guys. So at one of these group hangouts, Cole and Colleen start talking to each other. In the pods, Cole and Colleen had a connection, but Cole wanted more than a surface level relationship for a marriage, which, yeah, I get that. But at this gathering, Cole says that Colleen is more the type of girl he would go after in the real world. And Colleen also says that Cole is the type of guy she would go for in the real world. Really? For sure, like, you would be the person who I would go to in a bar. But I'd like, approach you in a bar, too, a bar too by the way. It is a little flirty, I guess, but the way that Matt handles this, wow. I'm not kidding here. He tries to leave the show. Pages. No, 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 please, can we? No, 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 I'm out. Oh, it's, please, very it's very simple. It's very simple. Shit off me. I'm out. He tries to leave the show because Colleen said someone was attractive. Colleen, do not see any MCU movies with this guy. If your wife came up to you and said that some guy told her that she was cute, and then she in turn said that you're cute as well in the real world, if you were to buy me a drink, whatever happens, happens, would you be upset? That's not what Colleen said. All I said was you're a cute guy, and in the real world, sure. You're like gaslighting yourself right now. So after another group event, Colleen and the girls decide to go out to a club and this pisses Matt off so much, he starts to pack his bags. What, what did you tell her? I told her I was going back to the apartment and she said she was gonna meet me here. Okay. And instead of coming back with me, she went to the fucking club. But here's the thing, Matt was so drunk he forgot that he was supposed to go to the club with the girls and that Colleen had FaceTimed him asking where he was. As a group, we were like, let's go to the club after like this little party that we're doing. The girls went in one Uber, the boys went in the other. And we were waiting for them and we FaceTimed you, but you don't remember the FaceTime. And, and we said, where are you guys? And they're like, oh, we went back to the apartment. Just getting deep, aren't we? Yeah. No, it's not, a funny story now. It's a funny story. He had his bags packed. It, you need to hear more funny stories. I do think it's pretty revealing too that Matt's friends explicitly say they want to hear Colleen's side of the story because they know Matt's a yeller. No, we don't want to hear I'm your sorry. side. I'm sorry. I want to hear I'm your side. side. <laughs> I know your side. You yell. Ugh. I know Matt has some trust issues that he hasn't figured out yet, but that being said, he's bringing those issues into this new relationship now and it's affecting Colleen and that's not fair to Colleen. Later on, Colleen and Matt go on a date under the sea and you know what they say, it's always better down where it's wetter. You've been putting a lot of effort, you know, for, for our few little, I don't say fights, I'd say a little bit of stir ups that we've had. Yeah. A stir up, Matt, again, you had your bags packed. Uh, fights aren't exclusively happening in the boxing ring. Could you see the rest of your life with me? I just, I Colleen, just. Stop playing games. Don't play games. 
Dude, you've threatened to leave her twice now. If anyone's playing games, it's you. No, I'm not playing Tell me games. how you feel. I just... Say it. Say it. No, I just... Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. No, no, no. Say it. I just, um... Safe. She would if you would stop interrupting her. So yeah, if you uh, weren't able to figure it out, this may not be the best relationship, but don't you worry, if you weren't able to pick that up, the music will spell it out for you. Yeah, and this isn't like the fun toxic where you become a superhero afterwards. No, this is the toxic that makes family gatherings suck. And I did forget that Alexa and Brennan are on the show. They're doing well. If it was a competition, we would be like number one. But it's not. But we are. Yeah, I know that sounds bad, but she's absolutely right. Then Bartise continues to think that he's more mature than he actually is. I'm gonna say this in the order I don't normally say it. Swallow, <laughs> open your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and don't chew. Cole tries to make dinner for Zay, but he sucks at cooking. Yeah, Cole's so bad at cooking, Zay just takes over. This is a very white, not seasoned piece of chicken. Please season it. Uh -huh. Don't worry though, because this quickly becomes a Will Ferrell movie and Zay's more of a Hallmark Channel gal. I forgot to tell you. Oh my gosh, with cooking chicken. What is wrong with you? Jesus, shots fired. So they have an argument and this leads Cole to ask Zay if she still wants to marry him. Where are you at? Are you, are you actually gonna marry me? If I could make a decision off of the pods and off of the last two weeks, I'm a thousand percent in. Like, You're a thousand kind of percent stuff. in. <laughs> he is dumbfounded that she still wants to marry him. And then this all spirals into Cole thinking he's got one major gotcha on Zay. Are you bipolar? We're having a very serious conversation. What so did I, I ask you know. just now? I asked you a question. You asked if I was bipolar. Oh, are you bipolar? He looks like he just solved a mystery and is trying to explain it to everyone like, yes, it was Mrs. Johnson in the bathroom with the knife. What was the motive? Well, she was tired of him never picking up his fucking towels. Also, apparently Zay isn't bipolar, so that was a big swing and a miss by Cole. Yeah, sent the wrong person to jail, bud. So now the men and the women split apart to go to their bachelor and bachelorette parties. And I love the juxtaposition of the women going to the strip club. <laughs> And then the men staying up late to talk about their relationships. We're happy. I'm happy. This is real. This, I mean, I can tell y'all how I feel. You did this because you fucking cared about your feelings. And I'm happy about it, man. You know, I'm glad the girls aren't having deep talks because I know how Raven would react to that. I saw it, I saw it. The strippers tonight, it's out of my comfort zone, but they're nice. You know, it's nice to like throw the dollar bill. <laughs> Okay, for Colleen's sake, nobody show this to Matt. So the big day has finally arrived and I'll give you the little highlights for everyone's wedding. SK and Raven don't end up getting married. I do not. But don't you worry, they are still together at the reunion show. Nancy says yes to Bartise, but Bartise is not feeling it. I do not. They decide not to talk about their problems at the altar, so they go outside next to a window where everyone can see them. Gone through in the real world with you. Nancy's family isn't super jazzed that this is all going down, so they mob over to Bartiz and Nancy, and they uh, look like they're about to break some legs. No, he did no. not. So now we, we all brought you for a reason. Bartice, you should do yourself a favor and roll out of here like a yoga ball. Zay says no to Cole and then just goes off on him at the altar. You have disrespected me, you have insulted me, you have critiqued me, and for what it is worth, you have single-handedly shattered my self-confidence. Everything in me and the logical part of my brain tells me that love shouldn't feel this way. Love shouldn't hurt like this. I can't marry you. Jesus. And then when Zay walks away, all of her friends start clapping. <sighs> Okay, yeah, I know he's a little immature, but God, even the priest was like, damn, that was rough. Alexa and Brennan get married? I do. Yeah, I know, shocking. What is actually shocking though, is that Matt and Colleen get married. It, it, it speaks volumes, I love you to death. Absolutely, I do, I wanna marry you, absolutely. Ugh. I'm gonna talk about this more in a second. Then at the reunion show, everyone is roasting on Cole, the person, not the rock. The truth, you can start with that. Why do you hate me, Nancy? That's why I was the way I was. It's because... I'm sorry. Or kind of a... 
You called me evil at the beginning of this and deceitful earlier. Yeah, again, he had some problems, but Jesus, guys. And here's where things get a little tricky because it becomes a huge he said, she said. And but, but based off the show, I think Cole is getting gaslighted here. Y'all don't believe the words I say. Like... I heard her, I listened. She wanted nothing to do with me. Zay claims that Cole tried hooking up with another woman during the bachelor party, but all the men confirmed that there were no women at the saloon that they had rented out. I tried to, <laughs> I tried to kiss a girl what? at the bachelorette party. Oh my gosh, we didn't and see I was a like, single Cole, girl. What did she say? And you were like, no, I, I, you said I'm engaged to get married and I just wanna kiss one more girl. And she was like, no, I don't. I think the phrasing was I don't like I don't do cheating and I literally said literally never happened Cole, y'all know y'all went somewhere I know that, y'all I mean, always after <laughs> during the bachelor party I mean there were no girls anywhere on it the men say they can't confirm or deny if Cole went somewhere else afterwards but Cole said he didn't where did we, we go know. Brennan I don't know man I was blasted bro I had like 20 shots and then like 20 beers like I don't know what to tell you yeah and we didn't go anywhere there? because of that we got ubered <laughs> home dude mm -mm. Yeah. um and then I jumped in an uber after the after the bar so I don't that's, that's news to me. I'm not saying anybody's right or wrong. I'm just saying. Zay also claims that Cole controlled her eating habits and refers to one time where Cole didn't want her to eat little oranges or cuties, but it didn't make the final cut. Like the trying to control what I ate and me changing my eating habits. The cutie story that didn't make the cut. Lucky for us though, Netflix released this clip at the end of the reunion show. And yeah, I see why it didn't make the final cut. It's pretty boring. In context of the clip, Cole's more saying she shouldn't eat the cuties because they're about to go out to eat and they just ate some cherries that we saw on camera. Oranges, are you about to eat two of those? Maybe, that's a serving. You better, okay with that? You better save your appetito. And when Zay says she's only had some peanut butter and a banana, Cole is confused and even offers her his Poke Bowl. I've only had a banana Talking and life. a scoop of peanut butter today. Oh, big ol', big ol' summer tonight. So. You only had a banana today? Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, I could I definitely you tell you, but I okay probably bowl. shouldn't. I don't want to say this invalidates Zay's stories, but I do think it's a little weird that the show wouldn't show this stuff. Like you're telling me a reality TV show isn't going to follow a bunch of men during the bachelor party to another bar. Then regarding Cole's edit, there could be a lot we didn't see, but why wouldn't they show us? Like last season, we had Shake on the show, and I genuinely believe the cast when they say he got a nicer edit than he deserved, but it's not like that edit made him look great. He still looked like an asshole. Like Shake's mom preferred his then fiance over Shake. Being very frank, I'm very much identifying with her right now more than you. And she could find someone who absolutely yeah. loves her the way she is. And she's a wonderful person. And I do. She doesn't deserve someone who gives her even half a percent less. Like I've watched the show a lot over the past couple of weeks and I can say Cole's edit has been pretty consistent of being like the man child that means well. I know the show wants to have that tension of will they get married, will they not? But the show has successfully pulled off that tension while making people look like dicks. I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt here because we do see throughout the show that she's analyzing all these little things so I understand why she thought Cole's comments would be directed like that. And Cole has made her feel insecure throughout this season. But again, I don't know these people. I have not been in their situations. And it is just a big he said, she said at this point. But now I do want to talk about my biggest complaint about this reunion show and it's how they treat Matt and Colleen's relationship. When they start talking about Cole and Colleen's talk about being attracted to one another, this is what Matt has to say. I do have to commend Colleen for coming to me that night and immediately saying, this is what happened, this is what I said. You know, I did kind of lose my cool a little bit. Again, losing your cool, you were about to leave the show. I don't know why everyone on the show lets Matt get away with these types of comments because it underplays what happened in the show. And here's the thing, the show never asks Matt about his anger problems or if he's doing any self-improvement. It's just like, hey, he's married. He's fine. Like, I'm sorry, but Bartice is rightfully getting roasted out there. But if he said yes to Nancy, would he like still be getting the same type of heat? Like if Matt has been doing some self-reflection and is improving on himself, I'd feel a lot better about this marriage. But like based off the show, it doesn't look like a healthy relationship. And this is the thing I've been trying to say from the start is that this show actively tries for you not to look at the red flags. Like Matt and Colleen's relationship based off the show is something that shouldn't be celebrated. The show never shows Matt and Colleen as a functional relationship. Like maybe they are, but we never saw it. Also, I wanna say, I don't fundamentally believe in the phrasing of this show. The term love is blind is unironically misused throughout the entire show. In that moment, Will you say I do to the person you fall in love with 
sight unseen, or will the real world sabotage that love and will you walk away from them forever? Is love truly blind? I get that the show's all about not seeing your partner until you're engaged, but like the actual term love is blind is meant to be as a warning that you should see these red flags, but you're so in love with them that you don't. The show's trying to say, yeah, just ignore that one thing you don't like. So what if you have some problems? You have someone, you should just marry them. The show's not like promoting a healthy message and that's sort of what bothers me so much. So yeah, sorry. I know this isn't like the most funny way to end the video, but it was something I wanted to point out. Anyways, that's it for me today. And as always, if you like what you see, you know what to do, do all the YouTube -y things. Uh, if you like this video, YouTube thinks you're gonna enjoy this video. Are they right? Only one way to find out. And I will catch you on the next one.